What is complex PTSD or CPTSD and how is it different from PTSD? How do we treat these problems? That's what I'm going to talk about today in this video. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I publish weekly videos about mental health education and self-improvement. If you don't want to miss a video, click subscribe and the notification bell. Today's topic is inspired by a viewer question from ZT, and I'll read the question. If you don't mind, I'm curious about something. I am bipolar and getting proper care, but there's something that happened to me over the summer. My brother-in-law violated me by touching my breast and my butt on the outside of my shorts and inside of my shirt arms of a shirt. Would you please talk about how to handle this? My doctor has me on something for PTSD, and it's not helping with how to handle this once and for all. I would love to see a conversation about that, please. Thanks, ZT, for this question. I also had a question about CPTSD, so I decided to include both topics in this video. PTSD used to be considered an anxiety disorder, but with the new addition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual that came out in 2013, it was moved to the category of trauma and stress-related disorders. The significance of this is that PTSD is more than anxiety. People have very complex emotions afterwards that include guilt, shame, and anger, and those are just examples, but lots of things more than just anxiety. You can think of PTSD as an emotional reaction to a traumatic situation. The trauma is something that poses a risk to your life, physical harm, or sexual violence. And this would be something like experiencing a, nas a natural disaster or a car accident or being sexually assaulted like in the case of ZT. This would not be something like being yelled at by your boss or being embarrassed in front of a group of people. Those situations no doubt are upsetting, but they are different in quality from the trauma of a life-threatening situation. This would also not happen from having a terminal illness like cancer but it can happen from a medical catastrophe that's sudden and unexpected, like waking up from anesthesia in, in the middle of surgery. Now, this issue of qualifying trauma can make some people feel invalidated. And it's as though their traumatic experience isn't bad enough for them to get PTSD or their experience doesn't count. And that's not really the intent of the diagnosis. The reason for excluding certain experiences as qualifying trauma for PTSD is because not all things that you experience um, as traumatic result in the grouping of symptoms that we call PTSD. That doesn't mean that your trauma doesn't cause you to be depressed, ruin your self-esteem, or make you have anxiety. It just means that your reaction to the trauma is different than what we see in people with PTSD from certain types of traumatic experiences. In fact, we've seen on brain scans that people with PTSD have changes in areas of their brain like the amygdala and the hippocampus that people without PTSD don't have. So I just wanna make that clear that saying your traumatic experience doesn't qualify for PTSD is not saying that you weren't hurt by your situation or that there's nothing wrong with you. It just means that your response to the situation is not the same as PTSD. But we do have other trauma-based disorders. So in reality, it really doesn't matter whether we technically call it PTSD or adjustment disorder with depressed mood. The more important thing is that if your symptoms are a response to trauma, that the trauma is addressed in your treatment. That's what matters. And I'll talk about the treatment um, later on in the video. But first, what does PTSD even look like? And I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here because there's a lot of symptoms with PTSD. In fact, there's 20 possible symptoms. But I will list the symptom criteria in the description for you. But the gist of it is, you have four groups of symptoms. Intrusion symptoms, where memories of the event just pop into your mind at times that you don't want it to. And this can be nightmares, or it can be thoughts that happen during the day. There's avoidance symptoms of things that remind you of the trauma. Someone who had a bad car accident may never want to drive again, or even 
get into a car again. Then there's negative thoughts or moods associated with the trauma. An example of this would be someone who feels like they just don't think that they're going to live very long. They don't necessarily know why, that's just a feeling that they have. Or they have the constant thought that something else bad is going to happen. The fourth group of symptoms involve being on edge or, or hyperreactive. And this is where you can get the anger outbursts. Or the person um, can have trouble sleeping because they're checking locks in the middle of the night. To have PTSD, you need one or two symptoms from all four groups occurring at the same time. So this is what I mean by PTSD being a very specific type of disorder that results from a specific kind of traumatic experience. So what's complex PTSD or CPTSD? Complex PTSD is not an official diagnosis in our diagnostic manual. Instead, we call it a construct or a term used to describe different, a different kind of experience that a person has from chronic traumatic experiences that occur over time. It's usually trauma that starts in childhood, and this could be either physical, emotional, or sexual abuse. It can even result from neglect. And because the neglect or abuse is occurring during the extremely vulnerable developmental years, the trauma shapes your development and your personality. It's like you have a fractured self and people suffering from this can spend years trying to mend the fracture. So unlike a person with PTSD uh, who may be checking locks and having flashbacks and refusing to drive, or jumping every time they hear a loud noise, with CPTSD, you see more behavioral things like relationship difficulties, poor self-esteem, anger problems, mood instability. The person with CPTSD can develop a depression or anxiety secondary to these problems, but at the core is the issue of this fractured self that came from a serious emotional disruption during the formative years. So the baggage from all of that trauma ends up being hardwired into you. And this hardwiring affects how you respond to the world. Now, the person with PTSD can also see some shifts in their personality, not to the same degree as the person with CPTSD. You can become more negative, not necessarily all the way depressed, but have this lingering negativity about your future. You can also feel as though you have memory problems be a lot more irritable all the time, have a lot of shame, even anxiety and sleep problems. And the person with PTSD can also become depressed on top of that. So how do we treat the trauma-based disorders? If you have a significant depression or anxiety symptoms, those can be treated with medication, but really getting at the root of the trauma requires psychotherapy. And not everyone needs medication. If you need medication though, think of it as something that dampens your symptoms that are causing all this disruption to your life just to make it easier for you to work through the trauma experience. A very good strongly recommended treatment for trauma is EMDR, and that stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. This involves discussing the experience while engaging in the exercise of moving your eyes back and forth. The process of crossing the midline of your brain going side to side helps your brain reprocess how you respond emotionally to the trauma. That's a very simplified explanation of that therapy. If you are avoiding things like avoiding having sex because you were raped, a therapist can use different forms of exposure therapy to help you reconnect to the thing that you're avoiding. There's other kinds of trauma-based therapy, such as cognitive processing therapy, which is very popular in the Veterans Administration, and they use it with um, veterans with PTSD. There's also brain remapping and other somatic therapies. Dialectical behavior therapy, which was developed for borderline personality disorder, can be a form of trauma-based therapy because borderline personality disorder is thought to have its roots in childhood trauma. So, and I'll have a link to that video where I discuss borderline personality disorder. So if you have complex PTSD, 
DBT may be very helpful for you even if you haven't been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. I hope this helps you understand the difference between PTSD and complex PTSD, as well as answering your question, ZT, on how do you get past the trauma and what are the ways that are the therapies that can be used to help with that. It's not gonna be just medication. Leave me a comment to let me know your thoughts about this and if you have any experience with this. Thanks for watching.